Hello and welcome back to Insanely Creating. Thank you so much for being here. Right, let's just get straight into this. You have seen the thumbnail. We are going to repaint Laguna Blue, the G3 Laguna Blue, who is very pink. In fact, a little bit too pink for this background. Let's just sort this out a moment. Ha ha, much better. She's, she's pink now. Um, she's no longer blue. She's Laguna Pink. Um, I still really like the sculpt and the hair, the, this whole design I actually really like. Um, it's just a little bit weird that she's now pink and it's a bit of a shame in my opinion because we've got Draculaura, she's pink. I think it would have been nice to have kept this doll blue. I know she's got the half blue legs with her lovely little fins but in my opinion I would have appreciated still seeing her blue. Right, so what are we doing with her? We are doing what we did with Frankie. We're gonna do a repaint. If you didn't see my Frankie repaint video, I will put a link in the description. But I had a little look on Pinterest at some more Japanese street fashion, and these were the images that stood out the most to me, mostly this hairstyle and these shoes. So I drew this and put together this little idea. It's subject to change depending on what fabrics I've got and what I can find in my stock of many fabrics, scraps and various whatnot. So let's get this doll prepped. So it's just the standard procedure of getting a doll ready for a repaint. We are making her nude and then we are tying back her hair, chopping it all off, boiling her head, removing it and then taking all of her face off with acetone. I really like her thin ears. I think they're really sweet. <laughs> head boil time and then we'll be able to remove the head relatively easily. And then using an acetone soaked cotton pad we can take the face off so that we've got a nice clean canvas for putting a whole new face on. such a pretty face but I am a bit gutted at how sculpted these eyes are. I don't like drawing my eyes this big so I'm gonna have to figure out a way to try and make them smaller without making it look ridiculous. So uh, yeah, wish me luck. That profile though, oh so cute. Right, let's talk hair because we want to achieve some platinum blonde space buns that then have dreadlocks wrapped around them and tied off, uh, just like we saw in the reference photo that I used. So I'm going to use this cream sort of color. It's definitely not white. It is more of a cream. I think it will help give off more of a sort of platinum blonde hair rather than it being brilliant perfect white I think I'll go for more of this cream I think it will look nicer against her pink skin tone so I need to get this yarn ready for rerouting so instead of doing the normal way of brushing it all out with the cat hairbrush and straightening it that makes it go awfully frizzy and fuzzy and I personally find that a nightmare to then try and reroute with so here I'm pulling the yarn apart and then straightening it that until it's a lot straighter. Uh, these are all the ones that I've straightened already and then I just take each piece and I gently pull it apart. I roughly get about two or three pieces out of each of these and that just makes it a lot more manageable to be able to reroute with them. I did see someone do this on a video 
ages ago and it was meant to be for being able to get longer hair wefts from yarn but I have no idea whose video that was but I I haven't used it to be able to make particularly longer wefts but it does make it a lot easier for when you're re-rooting with yarn hair personally so this is what I did and here's how she's looking so far I always start at the back I don't know why um, but I'm going to go all the way around the edge of her hairline and then I will go all the way down her center parting all the way to the back of her head uh, and really plug that center parting so that it there's no gaps whatsoever. And here's how it's looking all plugged. So yeah, as you can see, this is literally just going around the edges and down the centre parting. I did not bother going in the middle. There is no point. It's going to be tied up into space buns. No one is going to see. Uh, otherwise, it will just be overplugged. There'll be too much hair and it will go all bulky and horrible. This will keep it... Oh, hello. This will keep it looking really nice. Next to tackle is her little hand because in my concept sketch, I wanted her to be giving the peace sign. So I need to cut these two fingers that are attached. I need to cut them, uh, well, not cut them, but detach them from each other so that we can then glue her other fingers down so that it looks more like she's making the peace sign. When I go to fold down the fingers, I actually take out a little notch using my X-Acto blade. This just helps the finger actually fold down a lot closer together. It looks much neater. So I then put the little bit of super glue onto there and then pinch it down using my pliers. Right, it's time for the soft pastels and the watercolour pencils because we are going to do the face up. I start off by just doing a slight colour correction. I'm just adding a little bit of blue just to dull down the brightness of this pink because it was just a bit much for me. And here comes my troublemaker, Sylvester, nearly treading on the X-Acto blade. So serves me right, I should keep that covered. But he was absolutely fine, don't worry. Here's the first pass at the face up. Just outline the eyes just so that I get the shape the way that I want it. And this is what I'm gonna choose for her iris color today. It's the Arteza Lavender. And I finally got myself a proper pencil sharpener for my watercolor pencils. This is the Faber-Castell sharpener and the normal side is perfect for my Arteza watercolor pencils, but the other one that's labeled color is perfect for my Faber-Castell watercolor pencils. So there you go. And once everything is roughly sketched out and I've put a first layer down for her iris colour, I start going over things to make them more pronounced. I have added some cute little stars and dots onto her cheeks and I have put a yellow plaster or band-aid across her nose. I saw this in quite a lot of really cute decora girl fashion uh, when I was going through Pinterest and I really loved it so I decided to add it onto this doll. I also body blushed her and just added some extra pink in certain areas that I like to do. I didn't bother sanding down her pants this time because to be honest I completely forgot. I got so caught up in everything I just started blushing everything and suddenly realised I'd blushed over some pants. I also added some details onto her hands and gave them little plasters on some of her fingers. And here is the face. I think she looks so cute. What do you guys think? And using some acrylic paint, our doll got a rainbow manicure. Time to reunite that head with the body and see how it looks all together. Yes, I put the hand on the wrong 
one. Let's just ignore that. That's better. Ah, she looks amazing. She's so cute. My hand is in the way for most of this but I was just putting her hair up into her space buns I started off by putting them into bunches and I've left two little pieces for the front and then from the bunch I twisted it and then twisted it around itself to make a cute little bun and then secured that with another hair elastic I didn't need to use any hairspray for this which was amazing And next is going to be the dreadlocks that will wrap around the space bun. So I just unraveled the hair yarn and then we're just doing a quick pass over with the hair straighteners. This will hopefully keep them in like quite a nice little chunkiness so that they still look like dreadlocks and not just long flowing hair. the dreadlocks is super easy because it's just wrapping them around the space buns. I don't need to secure it, they stay in really well so there's no pins or anything involved. You'll see later I end up making them a lot shorter just so that they match the concept art a lot better. Now we're just going to add our two little pieces at the front by just braiding them in with a teeny tiny little plait and I keep going all the way until we run out of platinum blonde hair. Once I reach the end, I actually then secure it by adding a little bit of glue on just to stop it from unravelling. And I'm not going to lie, I think this is the prettiest hair I've ever made. This is gorgeous. I want this for myself. This is so nice. Right, this outfit's got quite a few little bits. Here, I'm just making her little leg warmers. So I've actually cut them out from the top of a sock and then sealed them down using my Yoohoo glue. Secured them so they dry really well. But one of them needs to be green. So I took some of my soft pastels and I'm actually using that to recolor this fabric. Is is kind of quite similar to like tights that you get or pantyhose. Um, but it's quite thick so we're able to colour it and then I'm just going to seal that in using my hair straighteners and hopefully it should stop it from rubbing off onto anything else. Fingers crossed, who knows if it will work, it might. I then add some little pom-poms on and they are adorable. cut out a little strip from some faux leather um, in different colours. I round off the edges and then for one of the belts I actually took a button and used my little Dremel type of tool to drill some holes into it to make it look like one of those big 70s style buckles. The plastic melted all over my little drilling bit that I used for this um, and I had to try and scrape it off so I probably won't be doing this again in a hurry but I did that for this belt and then for the other belt I just took some jewellery wire and sort of wrapped it around itself and made it into a little buckle shape using a real belt as a reference. I will add some holes so that this can actually be attached to her just like a real belt would. I quickly decided to just make her a little satchel style bag 
uh, just out of some nice little pastel coloured fur and a ribbon and then I just decorated it using a googly eye for the front and then two little heart shaped beads for the sides. And for her jacket I decided I wanted this to be lined um, but because of her fins I decided not to line the sleeves because I think it was making everything a bit too tight because the stripey fabric isn't stretchy whereas the pink fabric that's going to be on the outside is stretchy. So with the extra fabric that I had for what was going to be the sleeves, I'm gonna turn those into cute little cuffs and just have those on the, on the ends of the pink sleeves. Now we're modifying her existing shoes or sandals, they're more like sandals. Uh, but we're going to add a toe cap onto the front and then we're also going to add a little bit more platform so that we can colour it just like the ones that we saw in the reference pictures that were all rainbowy and they just look stunning. So yes, we're going to add some extra height to it so that we can fit on an entire spectrum of colours. made a few things off camera while my camera was recharging but here we go we have got the doll her hands her little jacket her belts her little swimsuit her bag some socks her leg warmers and her shoes. I even made some little earrings that match her hair beautifully. I found some beads that might make some perfect bracelets. I made a little necklace, a little matching bracelet and a chunkier necklace. I also made a skirt, I can't believe I forgot to put it at the end of the video, I made, I made a little skirt with a velcro closure at the back. Ah, I can't believe I forgot to include it! Ah! But here, ready for the reveal. <laughs> could not be happier with this doll. I am a little bit in love. She's brilliant, even if I do say so myself. So if you actually ended up liking this as well, give it a thumbs up. And if you ended up loving it, subscribe and ding the bell so that you never miss a future video from me. We have done two repaints already from the G3 line. Why stop there? Let's keep this train going. Who should we do next? Leave all of your comments and ideas down below. I am in absolute awe and admiration of how many people have seen my videos and the lovely comments that you guys have all been leaving for me. Thank you so much. It is an absolute pleasure to be able to show my artwork onto the interwebs and actually have you guys enjoy it is just out of this world. So with that, thank you for sticking around to the end of the video and watching this one. And hopefully I will catch you in the next one. See you then. Bye-bye.